there is only one way how you can make one million dollars with your steam game within the first 10 days and you will find out here but if you don't watch until the end you will end up as a poor unity developer all right so let's learn about the dave the diver that's the game that sold more than one million copies in 10 days and here is the interview with a game director. I have not played it yet. We are probably going to play it on stream because I am quite curious what it's going to end as. Okay, so I got here some comments. Some got called from Yayai that uh, the game got promoted by XQC quite a bit. There you have it. Just get it promoted by XQC. That's how you make a million dollar within 10 days. This is a plan from the start. The article is written by Anur Anarquel. You guys make sure to check it out and come clap here. To Dave the Diver is a delightful experience that somehow makes us roguelike, spear fishing, exploration, and a time management sushi restaurant simulator into one of the most joyful game of the year. Not gonna lie, that actually does sound delightful. That does sound very fun. I think we will need to play it. Uh, Dave the Diver became very popular very quickly, and I was very curious about how this game came to be. I had a quick chat with uh, Yeho Wang, uh, Dave's dad director. I hope I didn't mispronounce it. If I did, I am honestly sorry. And the game is a recent global hit on Steam and that sold 1 million copies in less than 10 days. Wait, that sold 1 million copies? Damn, that's way more than 1 million dollars. I already kind of promoted it with million dollars, so we're gonna run with that. But, oh damn, that's way more than 1 million dollars. That's very, very impressive. Oh, what is that question, Sneaker? Are you asking what's in the second tab? Well, wouldn't you believe it? That's the game I am working on. It's called Lost Harmony, a cozy game where you play as a bird in a post-apocalyptic world and you can vicious it right now. Link in the description. So, we have here a few points that are gonna help us uh, figure out how this game and manage to sell so much. Uh, sell so much, so let's find out about it. Uh, how did you and your team come up with the idea? The idea came from the Japanese pub near the ocean. Step number one, travel to Japan. No problem there, right? We all can travel to Japan collectively. How long did you work on the game? We worked on this project for two years until the early access and had eight months of early access period. Okay, that's actually quite a long time. Not gonna lie, that was in development for way more or way more than I thought. If I looked just at the screenshots and things like this, I would not expect this game to be for such a long developer. But interesting approach with having two years and then early access for eight months. I would love to know more about early access, especially because it's relevant to my game, which is Lost Harmony, and you can wish it on Steam right now. One time is funny, two times is fucking annoying, no? How it was the game marketed? Uh, they didn't really put much effort into it. Oh, but wait, wait, they didn't put much effort or much money into it because those are two very different, very different aspects that uh, matter here. We didn't really put much effort or money into marketing. Instead, we tried to keep a good relationship with streamers who played our game. We sent them specs and even put them in games as NPC. So what basically happened here is that during the early access, uh, streamers tried it. When they were happy with it, they kind of kept up the relationship and kept working with streamers uh, while the game was in early access and in into the into the release that seems to be what happened there if so that seems like a pretty good strategy i should take my note uh, how many games have they worked on before uh he made uh, two mobile games evil factory godzilla defense force that sounds like a proper proper mobile games right there yeah uh, but other ones are not directed by me but he participated okay people here seem to be or developers here seem to be quite uh, quite professionals okay let's be realistic here don't, let's not expect really to sell million copies with your first game that's not really good expectation. Let's try to keep it small if you are developing your first game. If you are already a seasoned professional, then first of all, I don't know why you are watching me. But if you are just starting out, you have not really released anything, just don't hesitate, don't spend the two years working on it. Make a small game, release it, and see how that goes. The next one is gonna be much better. And uh, number five, any major challenges and how did you overcome them? Making a 3D creatures and 2D characters fight each other was the toughest challenge. Yeah, I would believe that. That sounds like an interesting uh, problem to solve. We originally thought about making all the fish in 2D, but it didn't feel alive. So we made the decision to make big ones into 3D and had a tough challenge to make it work with Dave, which is 3D. Uh, which is 2D. Okay, that sounds interesting. I mean, so what probably happens is that everything is actually 3D, would be my guess. And then you have a 2D world. And then you have a... To the sprites that exist in that world that seems like the most intuitive way how to go about it would be, that would be definitely an interesting challenge and number six developing a mobile game or steam page which one do you prefer steam game is more stressful but more fun i felt like i needed to compromise uh, some game design visions for microtransaction implementation but i can fully focus on the quality of the game in the single buyer of paid premium game i have to say i have somewhat similar experience i have worked on uh, two or three mobile games i have worked on uh, four or five vr games but 
VR games at this point are effectively more, more like glorified mobile games, not gonna lie. People don't wanna pay for anything, 90-95% of your of your player base doesn't pay anything and you have to find a way how to monetize it. It's especially difficult for VR because uh, most of the players playing VR games are kind of kids, right? They are not supposed to even play VR games. Uh, wait, you have published? I did publish mobile games, yep, yep, and you will never know about them. <laughs> A mobile, it's the hardest to get people to pay money for a game. It's only microtransactions. That's probably true, but in VR it's similarly difficult because it's a similar gra- crowd of people. But a lot of the players on in VR uh, are kind of younger. They aren't used to paying on games, and the moment you want to pay for it, it's that's it. You want them to pay for it, they are not gonna play. It. They are not gonna play. They're not gonna pay. It. I remember for Super Sword, we had about ten thousand or maybe twelve thousand total players, total downloads, and out of it, uh, paying ones was maybe one in a thousand. I think it was even less. It was quite bad. It was really, really bad. It's just like almost impossible to monetize. So no matter seven, after the success, how do you feel now? I feel the same. Well, that's that's relatable. <laughs> uh, more pressure on making new content and answering the game community since more eyes are watching us. I suppose, yeah. I think that I think that's really something to consider. You probably don't want your first game or even one of your first games to be very, very successful. Because if you do that, you are gonna all of the sudden uh, have a huge pressure on you. There's a huge difference between going from a little bit of a pressure, a little bit of more of a pressure every time, and then going from no pressure at all and insane amount of pressure. That's way more difficult than going from a pop, 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 pop. Yeah, that's quite something to consider. Uh, let's uh, read about the rest. Uh, Try to think like an athlete at a big morning winning night, but if I start getting lazy and arrogant with the success, we'll lose the next match. I think that's a very healthy and very good way how to think about it. Uh, number eight. What uh, are your future plans? What type of games are you going to work on? I will focus on improving and expanding uh, the Dave for a while. There are a couple of ideas beside the Dave game. I forgot the name. Dave the Diver. <laughs> there we go. Uh, casual multiplayer game, story driven JRPG. Oh damn, that's some high, that's some pretty difficult genres, but good luck, good luck. If he already managed to make a very successful game like that, and I'm sure that he knows what he's talking about. I want to try some more traditional genres with cool twists in the future. Sounds cool. We're gonna keep up, uh, keep an eye on it, for sure. Heads off to Yahe, uh, Yahe Ho Wang and the entire team of David Diver for their massive success. Absolutely, guys. This is amazing. Anyone who succeeds like that, huge, huge props. Duh, uh, we have not played it yet, but we are gonna play it on stream, so if you wanna play it on stream, you can join the Discord and subscribe to the channel. Alright, guys, I hope you liked the video. Feel free to check out Anul for more of his articles and if you would like to follow me for more you can subscribe and what you can do more is to check out Lost Harmony. It's about a little bird flying around in a cozy post-apocalyptic world. Sounds like a contradiction but trust me it is not. You can wishlist it right now and you get a link in the description as well. See ya.